seasonal. Um, hold on. Um, uh, I'll start with this one, it's vaguely seasonal. Um, it's about my uncle. Uh, he died a couple of years ago. It's fine. Never had a single argument with him. And then recently, I've decided I hate him. Um, <laughs> little bastard. Um, really, so I'm going to let him have it. <laughs> and this is Uncle Doug. Uncle Doug right. looks at me funny. It's me, it's your niece, the one you ignore all year round. <laughs> Resentments tumble out of me like a jackpot on a fruit machine. Tomorrow, he won't remember a thing. Just another part of the seasonal ordeal. Propping up Grand's bar with his VAT 69. I forgive your booziness. But not your indifference, the way you look through me. Your eyes that glaze when I politely kiss your cheek. Your skin that carries a waft of old spice. Gran brought you three Christmases ago. Happy New Year, you old bastard. <laughs> Um, uh, this one's a, uh, is a very new one. It started off as a pantoum, but it kind of lost its way. So it's like a poor relative, really. Uh, so humour me. Um, this is Mr. Steggle and the sanitary town. <laughs> Evelyn goes round the maths table, asking who started their periods yet. I know Judy lies and says yes. I desperately hope Mr. Steggle intervenes. Asking who started their period yet. Stinking of smoke from the staff room. I desperately hope Mr. Steggle intervenes. Gangly in his corduroy jacket. Stinking of smoke from the staff room. Julie threatens to ask him for a sanitary towel. Gangly in his corduroy jacket. He seems extraordinarily sexless. Julie threatens to ask him for a sanitary towel. Evelyn goes round the mass table. He seems extraordinarily sexless, clinging to his phallic gradients on the board. And thank you. <laughs> one's next. Um, yes, this is, um, this is uh, certainly of that era. era sorry. Uh, this is the undead. Giggling in the graveyard, not a thought about the dead, laying beneath our platform shoes. Sitting on an ivy-clenched headstone, telling each other scary stories, to the extent that I slept with the light on. I told you I kissed Richard Jones among the deceased and forgotten residents. That was a lie, forgive me. I only met him once. However, the story about being touched up by Glenn Moore was unfortunately true. Even the part where I begged him to go on, and he <laughs> left it fast. When you moved 200 miles away, my heart had a graveyard of its own. I finally respected the dead. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> Um, but um, as we're on graveyards, I'll, I'll, um, I'll do the walk home. Yeah. <laughs> a little walk there, isn't it? Um, um, and um, this is the walk home. It was a disastrous romance. We went home the dark way, through the boneyard. But I wasn't scared with your denim arm around my waist. And when our lips met, that grim setting changed like the Wizard of Oz and I was wearing the red shoes. My head spun as your tobacco breath matched mine. Silk cut red and Peter Stuyvesant, king size I think, and never had anything tasted sweeter. I was so confused. I was in love. I wanted to get married. I wanted a fag. <laughs> my lips raw and chewed the ultimate marks of love, desire creeping under my winter coat. No, no, don't come to the door with me. I'm supposed to be with my mate. You're married. My dad will go mad. You've got to go. You will phone me. 
won't you? And um, this is the <laughs> so, um, This is related uh, uh, very tenuously again. This is the cigarette affair, and this was the disastrous consequences of that walk home. Yeah. I kept the crushed fag packet under my pillow, silk cut red, long empty of course. He bought them for me, even though he was nearly skint. That meant he loved me, didn't it? Eyes red, head heavy, lips dry. I love him, we'll run away together. Silence, bastard parents eat their liver and bacon. I'll get pregnant, I shout, trying hard not to blush. He'll come back for me. We were meant to be together. The moment I find true love with a real person, someone who was actually in the same room, it gets brutally snatched away. I'll never kiss anyone like that again. Bastard parents ruined my life. Mum said he was only after one thing. Men like that often were, but she was wrong. He held me so tenderly and he bought me my fags. <laughs> Surely if he came back for me now, my dad wouldn't hit him again. He'd see it was true love. Anyway, he's not with his wife anymore. Mate comes round, says he's going out with Renata, a year above me, red hair does it with anyone who asks nicely. How could he? A whole future swept away for the nearest scrubber. Didn't those 20 fags mean anything? <laughs> <laughs> Bastard parents get wind of this, but say nothing. Only that I can go up the disco as long as I'm back by 10 sharp. I throw the fag packet away. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>